Welcome back uh, again for a second, second part of the startup session. Uh, now we uh, want to thank you, thanks again everyone for the pitch, and let's start. Okay, my name is Fabrice Sauvignon, and I'm the founder and the CEO of the Hocus platform. The Hocus platform is the solution that connects private banks to life insurance companies. Here, we're in Belgium, the, with 200 billion euros, the life insurance industry is massive. When you look it at the European scale, the market is worth more than 10 trillion euros. When I was the CEO of a life insurance company in Luxembourg, bankers, private bankers, uh, but also their clients were telling me life insurance is an absolutely, absolute must have in the wealth management area, but in the meantime, the administration management is a nightmare. Indeed, life insurance in this area is about teamwork. Around the customer, the private banker, the assistant, the middle officer, the anti money, money laundering officer, the um, the, the wealth planner would work together. And as of today, in 2021, those people use hundreds, not to say thousands, of different forms that they are going to fill sometimes with their pens and they are going to exchange through email. It was absolutely high time to create a solution that would relieve them first from the heavy load workload that would actually reduce the operational cost and finally get the, the, transform the customer experience positively. This is precisely what I had in mind when I've created in January 2020 the Hocus platform. I've gathered 27 highly talented professionals from the life insurance industry, from the IT sector, from the academic world, but also from the wealth management, ma management area. And after a huge amount of work around, I mean, of research and development, we've created the Hawkes platform. That's the single uh, solution that can actually digitize all possible use case in terms of life insurance with the full coverage of the market, 100% of the market. As a result now, there is a solution which is very simple and efficient, available for the bankers, and that can actually uh, reduce the operational cost, reduce the workload, the time processing is reduced by 10, the workload is reduced by 10, and finally, the customer experience is positive. We are encouraged by the fact that already 14 private banks, and among them world leaders, I've made a decision to use our platform that represents f already 42 billion euro of asset and asset under management on our platform. And our project is to have by 20, 2024, 50 banks using our platforms in Europe. Soon we also will also offer life insurance companies to uh, use our platform to facilitate their interaction with those same private banks. You got it. The Hox platform is the digital solution that connects private banks to life insurance companies. And we trust that we can play a significant role, significant role in being a catalyzer in the continuation of this massive success of life insurance. Thank you. When we onboard a, a, a customer, we first of all onboard the current policies. As we are talking now, it's 25,000 current policies. And one thing is that we are now actually implementing the solution with them. So I, can, I cannot give you numbers about new policies because actually we are on the verge of implementing those solutions with those 14 banks. Okay. Thank you. Better. Uh, second question. And in terms of business model, yes. how does that work exactly? So you, you, you charge a SaaS fee and then a commission on products sold, or how does that work? Okay, first of all, we are not an intermediary. Yes, yeah, so, so what's your status? We don't charge commissions. All right. And we, our, our price, our base business model is, is based on uh, um, SaaS fees. Okay, to, just to give an example, 
uh, as we are talking now, the, um, um, the banks or banks with 10 billion euro would pay uh, around 200,000 uh, per year for, the for using the products on an annual basis. Because we see ourselves as a synergy platform. We believe that having a huge amount of banks would actually create this uh, very specific uh, tool to, to interact with banks, uh, to, with the life insurance, uh, cheaper. And our business model is also based on the fact that not only we're going to charge the banks, but we're also going to offer services to the life insurance companies to bridge the gap between our system and their system so that we can actually provide efficiency to them. I see, so pure, pure tech pro provider then. Sorry? Pure tech provider. Pure, pure tech provider. Uh, yeah, thank you for your pitch. Uh, you mentioned a team of 27? Yes. Is that everyone full-time or...? Uh everyone full-time, okay, even then. more than that. Yeah. Um, no, we've got, we've got uh, among the 27 people, we've got half of them are pure tech people, engineers, and the rest is uh, six, seven people, seven people product, and the rest is sales and admin. Okay, nice. Uh, and you mentioned in 2024 that you would like to have uh, 50 banks on yes. on the platform. W what is your strategy to, to grow uh, towards that number? I mean, it's very, our strategy is very basic. The, uh, we, we have this product. This is highly configurable. So when we onboard a new bank, we, we make it minimal to actually onboard a bank. And uh, our strategy is to actually, actually tell them, go and use us. And you, you're going to make massive, massive uh, operational savings and uh, and also the customer experience is going to be good and with the, our strategy to actually get our product known is to go on events like this one today but also we uh, we are most of them are past even e either wealth management people or life insurance people and we have a, a reasonable reasonably good access to those to those people to sell them the, 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 the product is that answering your question thank you uh, hello, um, I have two questions. First of all, um, uh, how long does it take to onboard a new bank? <laughs> Too long. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm asking <laughs> a question, I guess. <laughs> no, 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 I think that's one of, that's one of the key issues we're facing now. Um, of when we started the, the company, we started with three clients, major clients, and they, they, decided they made a decision to work with us. We had nothing to sell to them, just a, a, a piece of paper. And for them, it would have taken more than two years. Now, in the future, we expect the onboarding average time to be about nine months. But it de depends very much on them, actually. Depends on their governance, depends on uh, their people, depends on how much, mon how much uh, investment they make on that product. So it can be, we have a quick one now. We, we think that they're going to make uh, maybe five months. It's going to take them five months to implement. And for some of them, it's going to take 18 months. And so how do you qualify your leads? Uh, how do you select your c future customers? Uh, how do you get info information on uh, how do they value the, um, the life insurance in their offer? Um, do you have a strategy for this? We, we do. I mean, first of all, I think um, it's not very humble, but I think we have a deep knowledge of those customers. We know them very well. I've worked with them for more than 10 years. So... I know the way they work, how they organize, and uh, how they value that, and how they are themselves organized. So we try to adapt to that. And our strategy now is to convince the, 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 top, the, the top tier, the tier one, because they have the biggest book of business, and that's where the benefit is. I mean, the operational benefit is, is the most obvious, actually. I actually have a question. I should have started with this one. <laughs> uh, just to make sure I understand exactly what you do. The, when we talk life insurance, you're talking life insurance the Anglo-Saxon way, or the like prévoyance, or the life insurance... The no, French life way, insurance... Which is no, no, asset life management... Type no, yeah, thing. life insurance is... Um, we, t we talk here as a, what we, a carrier for investment, for saving. Exactly, so more, more for asset investment management pro yeah. program, like, like a, the yeah. French way of assurance vie. Yeah, in our market, in the market we are playing with, you're playing in, sorry, uh, the, the average size of a life insurance policy would be 1 million euro of investment. Okay, so how, how do you feel about European expansion? Uh, what are your next, the countries you're, you're going to target okay, next? Okay, we, we started that? with the French market and then Luxembourg, we have a, we have a foot yeah. footprint in Switzerland, which is a big market, yeah. obviously. And the next market, the next two, two markets would be Italy and Belgium. Great.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fabrice. We can have our next glitch, indeed. Hello. Good morning. My name is Gabriel. I'm the co-founder of Wikwiti. Wikwiti is a sustainability data platform. The vision at Wikwiti is that data should not be an obstacle for sustainability transition. And that's the case for financial institutions, but also for companies. Today, there are three main drivers that we see and are issues on ESG data. Firstly, of course, you know, regulatory changes and explicitly changing the demands on collection of data for climate risks and environmental issues. And that's expanding onto social ones as well. The second one is even though you have access to a number of data subscription and data providers, the methodology is obscure, it's untransparent, it's sometimes very expensive, and then sometimes data is also often lacking when you're talking about more mid-sized companies, private equity, or even just like credit portfolios for smaller companies. Finally, even if you have access to that data, you need to centralize it. Today, there's no one easy data provider that can solve all your needs. So it's really tricky. You need a lot of IT and manpower in order to integrate that and onboard new data providers. And then even then, difficult to then adapt your data, to adapt your financial products to your client preferences in terms of environmental or social issues. So we provide a platform that enables investors, banks, and companies to first centralize the data extraction from structured and unstructured sources, from different types of data, from their internal data, but also external data providers. Secondly, we then enable them to centralize that through their own methodology and pre-built templates. And then finally, we enable them to visualize it and use dashboards to report it afterwards. So what's the platform exactly? Four main aspects. One, AI data search bar. So if you have any questions, it's nice to have already your data, but you want to wonder, okay, what are the new regulations related to the activities in my portfolio? Or what are the carbon emissions of a specific company? We'll guide you through your database with you. Secondly, it's easy to use. You don't need to be an IT person to use the platform. You don't need to have new consultants help you on board on the platform. We enable that to do it for you, and you, the end user, can just plug and play and build your data pipeline. Thirdly, it's just focused on ESG use cases. So not just the environment, not just data management as a whole, but really all the ESG relevant frameworks and needs that you may have in the banking side, but also in the investing side. And finally, we have plug and play integrations. It's like an app store for ESG data, right? Today, you have one ESG data provider, you have a second one, and then you need to centralize it, integrate it within your methodology. Tomorrow, you can do it all in one dashboard. So, quick demo to show you how it works for one specific use case. Uh, well, it seems that the demo is not showing up. Basically, to give you an idea, um, it's a dashboard that enables you to have plug and play. So you decide what are, I don't know what the presentation is. You decide what are the different data sources you want. So let's say you want to assess ESG risks and ESG reputation risks on your portfolio. You choose, okay, I want to assess media, I want to plug, plug in on Twitter, plug in on Reddit and LinkedIn as well. We will then integrate that internally. These data sources we do ourselves with AI based in Wikuity. But let's say you also want to have carbon emissions based on another data provider, we can integrate that within the platform. And let's say even you're a private equity investor and you have sent questionnaires to your portfolio companies, we'll integrate that as well. And then we'll enable you to choose which framework you want, which is, for example, uh, a specific SDF SFDR framework, or you want to analyze your data based on the SDGs, we'll build a dashboard for you, and then you can just customize it based on the new modules and data points that you want to have within your platform. The uniqueness of our provision is that today you have ESG data providers who also have different types of coverage, and you also have a bunch of data platforms. But we are at the intersection of both. So we provide our own ESG data, we enable you to integrate external and internal sources, and we do the data management for you. And that enables us to have a very interesting model because we not only have the data itself that we sell, but we also have the productivity gains through the data management that we provide our clients. And that's where our market's quite interesting because we can focus on corporate bankers, corporates themselves, investors, and then asset managers. 
and we're working with a subscription model where even if like average subscription is 30,000 euros a year, then immediately if we have a very modest market penetration rate, the market's quite significant. What's the product roadmap? We launched in February 2021. We already had the first clients within wealth management and private equity and one of the large Belgian banks. Right now we've worked with consulting and SaaS model and tomorrow we are finalizing our data platform which enables then the users to just do that and it'll be focused on a SaaS model with subscription rates. Our team, very quickly, I co-founded it with my co-founder Frank. We both have a background within entrepreneurship, law, tech and consulting. We also hired our CTO who did five years at McKinsey as a lead data scientist and we have different type of freelancers who help for this business development but also technical side of things. In terms of advisors, we're not doing this alone. We very quickly decided to surround ourselves with the relevant people who have expertise in data, in impact, in finance, and entrepreneurship. We also have advisors within the nonprofit academic sphere who enable us to really strengthen that methodological work. And that's it. So if you're an investor, we'll be raising very soon, before August 2022, our seed round. If you have ESG data needs, really do reach out, scan the QR code, or I'll be around there and I'll be very happy to speak to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Uh, I have actually a question. So there is uh, surely a, a huge traction in the ESG data and reporting market. Now it is a market that is almost uh, amounting 300 million globally. The question is like, those solutions are mostly B2B, but we see some of those business models similar to yours that are shifting to consumers. So looking at a portfolio and being able actually to, um, depending on the consumer teams, like they, they choose, I don't know, uh, renewables or whatever, you adapt immediately the portfolio according to the consumer uh, yeah, uh, willingness. So. The question is, is there a, um, a strategy within, within equity to go that way, or is it something that you don't see uh, in, in the future? Well, 100%. So there is a strategy to do that, especially in Europe. New regulation within MIFID are going to require banks to ask questionnaires on ESG preferences. So it's going to be integrated. And for their own clients, they're going to have to integrate it as well. And the advantage with our platform is that since you have a wide variety of data sources, and you can frame it and analyze the data according to your own needs based on the framework you want. We've already worked with our clients where they said, okay, we want to have data specific on social issues because our clients want to have more socially financial products and we can just tweak it in a glimpse of an eye. So very much so, we, we understand that it needs to be a, like end facing product as well and I'm answering those needs. And the needs are not only regulatory, but they also come from what are the clients and what do they want for sure. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question for the jury member, the public? No? I can ask a question. Um, it's regarding the first step of liquidity, which is the extraction of data. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a you know, very challenging uh, part. Uh, you can extract data from public sources, like you mentioned Twitter, but also you partner with other data provider. Uh, but when you sell to private equity funds, um, it requires their portfolio companies to go deep in their, you know, <laughs> ERPs or whatever to extract some data. And how are you dealing with that? Have you developed some automated way to extract information that they will need to report? You know, we talk about the SFDR, the taxonomy, and stuff like that. Then you will need to report specific stuff that are not specifically uh, ready digitally. Um, so how do you do, are you dealing with the extraction from private companies for specific data? Yeah, so there are, I would say, two main things. Yeah. One is we partner with consulting firms, so when we have a new client and we need to help the data to be acquired and set up the right ESG KPIs for the portfolio companies, so then we can already set that up and have the relationship, so it's not only automated data extraction. The second one is we just have specific type of data extraction points, such as, you know, it'll be most simple one is questionnaires, but also being able to, through APIs, extract the data within automated platforms. So it's a combination of both to really make the life as easy as possible, for sure. Do you have plans to automate that, that step in deeper in the future? 100%, so yeah. that's really the goal in the platform is that it, we want to remove all the obstacles on that. And so at the moment, our approach has been like just based on the client needs. And so today, the first clients we've been working on 
questionnaires were fine, so it was more meta metadata, right? It's like, do you have an ESG policy? Do you have ESG people? Do you have an ESG board? Stuff like that. And bit by bit, as they want to have a much more kind of in-depth ESG analysis of their portfolio companies, that's where those kind of steps make sense. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Jürgen Wolf. Uh, I uh, work for A352, and I'm happy to uh, present our company. The question that I want to ask you um, is why do 82% of medium-sized businesses uh, and larger uh, mid-caps do have liquidity problems? It's because they don't know how much cash they have, and it gets even worse for them um, when they have to predict how the cash flow is going to develop in the future. Why is this like this? Because, and that's what I'm trying to show here in the picture, it relies heavily on manual processes. It takes them multiple days to aggregate their cash position and report it to the CEO. And when you talk about cash forecasting, the problem gets even bigger. Because they use Excel, uh, which has actually three bad impacts. The data quality is uncertain. It takes a lot of time to get the Excel organized. And there is the always error possibility um, by humans. Seeing this as a major pain point for our target customers, we decided to uh, found A352. And, uh, take this challenge uh, as our purpose for the company. Our solution, the Financial Navigator, is a cloud-based cash uh, management system that provides an all-in-one solution for our customer um, to help them to, do, to get their financial management better organized. So we actually connect to all the four different information silos that you see here that were before connected with Excel into one platform based on a multi-banking uh, solution combined with a payment factory, which enables them to do uh, time-efficient cash management and forecasting. Um, our liquidity planning is automated. On top of it, it provides an early warning system. And in the end, our solution creates transparency. By creating transparency, it reduces automatically business risk. And on top of it, it saves cost uh, in terms of wasted time and other costs for the customers. Our product has uh, a feature set of four uh, of five main components. They are all built on uh, banking level security. And in the end, we try to increase the quality of the decision relevant data um, and help them to take better decisions. This actually leads to two facts. Our customers can make actually the most out of their money. And on top of it, we enable them to really treat cash like a king. Talking about the product, now talking about the team. Um, actually, our team is outstanding for th three main reasons. First of all, we have complementary com uh, competences in our background. So it's tech combined with business. Um, second of all, we are, we are in the market since 10 years, I would say, I always make the joke, it's the time when FinTech actually didn't exist as a word, when we were, always do, uh, were already doing the business. And third, uh, last but not least, um, before founding A352, uh, we founded uh, Paycash, which one of the uh, EY partners in Luxembourg calls the biggest success story in Luxembourg after Stripe, uh, after um, Skype, and we managed to do a double digit million exit to Daimler. How do we see the market and how do we want to approach it? Our market segment is medium-sized companies and mid-caps in the range of 10, 15 million turnover up to 300 million. Um, we look at the Luxembourg and the German-speaking countries around, which ends up a potential customer number of 80,000. And we see the market value as a whole of 4 billion um, per year. We operate in a, in a SaaS model. It's a SaaS solution. Uh, we usually sell three-year contracts uh, with an average monthly fee of uh, 4K. 
and at the current moment, before uh, establishing a reseller model, we try to go through our network with direct sales. To accelerate the growth, um, we are looking for investors, um, and uh, I would be happy if uh, somebody uh, would like to get into discussions with us. Last but not least, we are also here to uh, find business partners to eventually create in a combination an even better product for our customers to make them happy. Um, that, that would be my speech for, for now, and I'm happy and open for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your competitors? Uh, our competitors? Well, um, I think uh, the, we, we put the market in different uh, board brands, we would say. Our competitors, actually in our segment, we don't have that many competitors. The big competitors where all the big money goes um, is the segment south of us, under us, which is actually SMEs up to 10, 15 million uh, turnover. Um, I think Pauline is heavily invested in one of them. Um, and on top of us, there is uh, solutions for, 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 for bigger customers, which is treasury management system or corporate performance uh, systems, uh, where you have the Kiri bars uh, and so on and so forth. But they don't enter our segment from top, neither I see the, the ones from the south segment going up north. I have a question for you. Yes. <laughs> Indeed, we're invested in a company that sells to smaller companies. Um, in terms of inter uh, inter integrations with other tools um, yep. that the companies may have, um, so you know, with the you know companies that we're talking about, they just need open banking, and then it works, right? Uh, but do you integrate with ERPs? Do you integrate with Salesforce? Do you integrate with other type of big, you know? tools that these companies are doing like 300 million in revenues may use already um, you know to generate cash or to plan no 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 I mean yeah, yeah I mean and that's that's part of the complication of our job right so and and I think that's a big difference also to, to your investment they heavily rely on uh, open banking solutions uh, actually we sign up with the same partner fintech systems. Um, so, so we know how this works, but the data that gets out of there is not sufficient for our analysis. So we use different rails, let's put it like this, and we have uh, uh, upload functionalities and automated connections to accounting systems to, to get the data into our system, yes. But this is one of the jobs that is important, I fully agree. In our last experience with Daimler, where we integrated into an SAP system actually, that is 10 years out of, I think now 15 years out of release, uh, so we got this organized, um, so we feel pretty comfortable on doing it. Um. No, just a quick follow-up question on, on that, uh, just mm -hmm. to get an idea of the, the time to onboard a new customer. Um, there's a standard timing, depend on the size of the customer. As I said, you know, it's from 10 to 300. Of course, the, the 10 million customer, uh, four weeks, the, the 250 million customer, which is our biggest right now, uh, we made it in five months. But actually there, it's again like, like one, of, one of the other startups here, it's not us that is so slow, it's one of the leading banks that puts project teams end and end. It takes us five months, but actually a day, a, an hour on every day, <laughs> if. <laughs> because we have trouble with their technology, send a mail, three day radio silence, then something comes back. Still doesn't work, another half an hour, and then you know eventually two weeks later we are able to access their API. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, maybe I uh, wanted to know a bit more about your know, go-to-market strategy. How do you, how do you address uh, those companies? Um, as I said, there's two levels. First level is uh, direct sales, which we are doing at the moment uh, through the founders networks. We went to good schools and we are connected in Luxembourg and also in Germany. So this is what we are pursuing at the current moment. Actually, word of mouth works, <laughs> surprisingly, um, and Google and LinkedIn, of course. Um, and uh, once, once we have a critical mass of customers the way we can show cases, we will go through a reseller network. That will also take some of the implementation work out of us because we plan to partner with them. How many customers do you have today? Uh, at the moment, we have three customers. 
um, and um, they, they range up uh, up to 12,000 uh, uh, MMR. Is there any question from the public? Um, okay, there's two explanations. First explanation, and I leave it to you to decide what the real reason was. First explanation, three founder, five servers, two test customers. Second explanation, full lack of creativity, <laughs> listening to rap music of the 90s, figuring out that the first band of Snoop Dogg was called by the telephone access code of his area, and, and maybe that matches the Area 352 idea, so I, I leave it to you. <laughs> You're welcome. Am I dismissed? <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. We now welcome Frédéric from Front Process. Hello, asset managers. My name is Frédéric. I'm the managing partner of Fund Process. So let's start directly with the idea. We saw a few years ago in the IT sector new coding technologies with the specificities to be fully web-based and integrable. So our idea at Fund Process was to take these technologies, adapt them for the asset managers, and integrate them directly in the core system. So concretely, what we do at Fun Process, we create a coding environment designed to be used by you, the asset managers, directly in your system. So you can code and develop by yourself the feature that you need in terms of investment management, risk management, compliance, private equity, and whatever. It's uh, not a new low-code platform, but a real full-feature coding environment where you can design what you want for your business. Um, to understand it, it's like the well-known VBA macro in Excel, but directly in your system. So what you code is directly connected to your data, is directly included in your automation, in your monitoring, and your, in your reporting. So. To cover the whole value chain, we create five development tools. You have first the ETL. The ETL is for the data management. Then you have the macro editor. Macro editor is to create your custom feature. You continue with the process designer to design your daily operational management. And then to get industrialized, you've got the automation and the reporting designer. So you start with the ETL. ETL means extract transform load. It's to connect yourself to all your counterparties. By counterparties, we mean your fund administration, your transfer agent, your broker, but also your internal system. It's also uh, designed to uh, read and extract automatically uh, all your key information from your legal documentation. As of today, many financial companies are only partially integrated. So uh, they have to manage manually a part of their activities. So uh, that's the scenario we want to avoid. So you have understood the first important prerequisite is to have you fully connected and fully integrated. Then, one, once you, your data management is okay, once you are fully connected and once you are fully integrated, you can, with the macro designer, design by you say your own func functionality, your own functionalities, namely your risk metrics, your compliance rules, your investment monitorings, and all what you want. And then with the process designer, you continue and you implement your operational management, namely your KYC process, your client onboarding, but also your due diligence and whatever. So as you might, be, might have already guessed, um, the main challenge with this new approach is the code. So uh, we have to help uh, our asset manager with the code. We, for that, our support, and our, our support and our research are working on four axes. The training, the templates, the simplification, and the community. Training and templates are the key. 
trainings is indeed a, a temp uh, an investment for our client, but it's also an opportunity because it improved the, it increased the technological um, uh, the technological skills of uh, of their teams. Templates uh, is also the key because starting to design a new feature or a new process from scratch, it's much more difficult than reusing templates. So our, whole, our, our objective is to provide them, our clients, with a wide range of templates covering all their needs. And then we, in the same time, launch an open source community where asset managers from all horizon can contribute each other to design macro. Last but not least, the outsourcing. Um, this approach, these technologies, can change the way you can do outsourcing. No, you can ask your service provider to design, but also to operate the custom service they are doing for you directly in the platform. So you, it's the, you outsourcing, it's transparent, you keep the end, and you can re-internalize later if you want or switch between your service provider. So thank you very much. A uh, quick, uh, quick word on the company. We, uh, we created the company three years ago. Uh, the research is now um, completed since this year, and we are live uh, in UK, in Belgium, and in Luxembourg. Thank you. <laughs> See you together. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the presentation. C can you share some uh, traction numbers, number of clients or revenues or Excuse me? traction numbers, uh, um, revenues or sales? We, have, or uh, we, have, if it, we are live in Luxembourg, in UK, in Belgium, but we have twi three clients. Okay. <laughs> One each, uh, good. One each, yes, <laughs> indeed. Um, the research ended uh, in June. We have starting the marketing during the early days a bit, but really since, set, since set September. Um, during the research phase stage, we were eight, eight contractors working to develop uh, the solutions. Now we are four. Uh, we are uh, we, we are four in the team, mainly focused on the support teams. Sorry, no. uh, it's mainly focused. Okay, mainly focused on uh, business development and also uh, support desk. So, eight during the first three years. Now four, but. We are hiring to be focused on the business development. Three clients is uh, is good already. Huh? Uh, Thank you. It's not a lot, but it's very good. Uh, in terms of uh, ideal client size, maybe it's in terms of AUMs, asset under management, that you are selling this. Alors, our clients, okay. uh, for the moment, our clients is more five hundred uh, million under management. It's the average, but we are also wor working with. Um, service provider, and also we are working with Big Four, the process is uh, engaged, to, uh, to collaborate. And we, uh, of course, asset management is not uh, a way we can uh, measure uh, the, um, it's, not, uh, it's not a measurement in that case. It's not uh, maybe the number of clients or the number of users, but it's for the next year. And a last question. <laughs> Thank I, you. I have a last question. The average um, contract size in terms of revenues so that you would be, that you would target for a 500 million AUM asset manager, like how how much you would be selling this for? Just 500. Okay. Um, so our pricing model is a percentage of uh, the asset under management. Okay, and you, it's. Less than one hundred percent of uh, one bips, you know bips, BPA. Okay, but it's less. I, I will not tell you the exact amount. No, no, but but so that I get the order of magnitude and I can yes, know, okay. make the math work in my head and understand the market size and stuff. So good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for your patience. I, I was just wondering about the uh, open source community. Is that more as a go-to-market strategy for you, or a byproduct of what people have been building? Oh, the market, the open source. Uh, we uh, we have launched uh, a GitHub on GitHub, an open source community, because in all solutions you can uh, code macro for any type of feature, and indeed it's it's free. So, but uh, to um, to increase uh, this community, we give our a special input. So, for our client, we design for you macro free if we can put it uh, on the community. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, about your geographical expansion. Thank you. You were talking mm -hmm. about UK. So I was wondering, what do you see in UK at the moment with your solution that you don't see in other countries? Uh, do you see a difference at the moment? No, not for the moment. It's asset management company. It yeah, but I mean like there in the UK, it's, it's developed in, in another way and it's also regulated in another way. So I was just wondering, is it something that is a cha challenge for you or is it something that is actually scalable easily from a country to another? Uh, it's easy. Okay. Because the, by nature, the, the solution is highly customizable because the, the, the solution manages the code. The code is uh, it's, uh, it's bring up to the, to the end user. So indeed, countries have uh, some discrepancies and some difference, but it's, highly, it's highly easily manageable in the tool. In the tool, you can. Yes. I don't know if the public has a question. Thank you. Thank you, Frédéric, for this uh, presentation. It's very, very uh, brilliant product. Thank you. Just one question. Um, now you are targeting asset managers, but because of this, uh, let's say, nature of the coding you are, that you are uh, providing, could you expand to other, uh, let's say, industries like uh, like uh, banking or insurance industry as well? I mean, they, they could also use this, uh, this product as well for their own purpose, or not? Yes. Yes, sure, because okay. we are focused on the asset management company, but the solution, because of the code, can be uh, customized by the client by themselves. So if you are an insurance company or if you are uh, in the financial sector, you can, of course, uh, use that solution. The ETL, uh, for the ETL for the connection is highly customizable. So you code, you mapping, you code, your data flow by yourself. And then with the macro editor, you design the functionality, the functionalities of your business, insurance or whatever. So it's indeed, um, it's a coding environment. It's not necessary uh, to be seen as a, a financial software, but really a, a coding environment for the asset manager, for the financial uh, people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we can uh, pass to the next. Yeah, the next pitch is in connect with Onu. My name is Onno Bloomers. I'm a co-founder and uh, CCO of InConnect, and I'm going to talk about insurance and safety combined. Something completely different. So uh, get ready. Just see how this works. All right, it does. Okay, question. What do you think is the best way to improve insurance? Is it to digitize manual paper-based processes? Or is it to pay out a claim in two seconds to your customer? Well, we all love that stuff. But there's something else. What is really making a difference for a customer when it comes to insurance? Our answer? By improving our customer's safety. Because there's a misunderstanding. Insurance is having your back, but after something has gone wrong. What if we can do better? What if we can help our customers to improve their safety? Because we have over half a million fires in these countries every year, even more burglaries. And we know we can do so much better when it comes to managing day-to-day -day risks. Up to the point where we believe that maybe half of the claims can be mitigated. So what if we do that? We have an increasingly digital world around us with data, with sensors, smart home devices. What if we can use all that? to do good. Think of all the cool stuff we could do. We can use a digital model to calculate your personal risk level, give you a safety score. And once we have that, we can give you tips and recommendations how to improve by specific products or services. 
And if we combine that with insurance, we can actually reward you for doing that. Because the minute you improve your safety, we know that we can actually lower your premium. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, it can't be a surprise, but this is what we're working on at InConnect. A new way to approach safety and insurance. Um, building an app to check your home safety, providing you with all kinds of information and content, how to improve, giving you an insurance quote based on all that information that we already have collected, and being able to reward you for your investment in safety and provide all kinds of gamification techniques to make sure that you take care of your loved ones and your key assets. Now, this is all enabled by the rise of IoT, by the fact that we have increasingly devices in our homes. In a couple of years, half of European homes will have at least one connected device. But it's not just the devices. It's also the fact that we as people are increasingly okay with the fact that we're sharing those data as long as we get something of value in return for it. For instance, personalized advice or recommendations or behavior-based premiums. And this allows us to create a completely different conversation with our customers. We're not just selling insurance anymore, we're helping you to improve your safety and provide you with the means to do that. And it's why we focus on those households who already have embraced some of this smart home technology. Because if you already have the devices, your insurance company never asked you about them. But we actually can reward you for the investment that you already made in having those devices. So, a little bit about the company. We, uh, we are a bootstrapping company, early stage, but we have an experienced team. Some of my colleagues, we're with a team of five, had the first European digital insurers already started 20 years ago, and they rolled out into six countries, right up until the credit crisis. And uh, we've been building these products in the form of prototypes. Where we are right now is there's these prototypes, they're beginning to get some traction, so we've just closed a deal with a major Dutch insurer to wide label our quick scan for home safety on their website. We're implementing that right now. Um, at the same time, we're building the full solution, scans, insurance product, administration, and uh, working towards a market launch, small scale in the Netherlands, backed by an MGA and a risk carrier, just to collect the data and, and test our hypothesis and find the best way to get people engaged on this safety topic. So one of the key aspects here is that by not um, starting with insurance, but by starting with a safety concept, we open up the route towards all kinds of new distribution partnership. For instance, if you're an energy company, you may already have services in place to support people with maintenance and safety and alarm systems. It's quite easy to take a step towards an integrated safety concept as a, as a stepping stone towards insurance. So, if you are interested in really taking a step towards a safer world, creating a new concept uh, to manage safety, um, whether you are a IT partner, potential distributor or investor, we'd love to have a chat with you. So thank you very much for time and attention. Thank you. Um, I have a question regarding uh, partnerships. So we see a lot of solar fintechs 
offering financing along with solar panel, for example. And to offer that, they basically partner with energy contractor, for example. Because your solution is so much linked, as you said, to smart appliances, is it something that you might consider, for example, creating a sort of ecosystem where you would partner with a smart appliance firm or, or something like that? Yes, definitely. And we are already talking, for instance, to cybersecurity companies because the cyber protection aspect is very important if we're going to use this kind of device to actually protect your home and you don't want to in introduce new risks. But it is, it is increasingly connected. Um, having solar panels also does something with your protection levels and you have to mitigate that. So working closely together with these kinds of companies would definitely be something uh, for us to consider. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, first question, uh, can you give us some example of uh, the application you want, a uh, uh, safety application you want to push uh, or for, for insurers? And uh, the second question, uh, don't you think that the customers will be re reluctant to give such information to their uh, insurance uh, company? <laughs> since, for example, uh, if you say, uh, today in Belgium, if you say uh, to your alarm company, uh, to your uh, insurance company that you have an alarm at home and, and you are a victim of a burglary without uh, uh, put a, um, so switching on your al alarm, you won't be compensated for this. So it's uh, the more information you give to the company insurance, the more reason they have to yep. not to compensate you. Do so. Ver what's your point about that? Very true. So, so, so um, uh, first of all, uh, um, we didn't choose this topic because we thought it was easy. We just chose this because we really want to solve this, and 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 we've got some interesting barriers, uh, and 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 this is one of them. How do you get people to, um, to, to share this data. And I think the key answer is that we're not talking about insurance for a long, long time. We're engaging with them on safety and we're building trust in, in, in that conversation. And then at some point we're going to add the insurance. So insurance is way at the back of the conversation. And in terms of, of, of the applications that we're building, we have on our website, we, we have a quick scan. It's just 20 questions, takes maybe two minutes, and it gives you already a high level safety score in these different areas of uh, fire, burglary, uh, water, and cyber. And uh, it's, it's basically, it's a first um, um, uh, step in learning if this topic is something for you because we know that there are customers who are really interested in this, um, but there are also customers that still need a lot of convincing and are way down the line and, and we're not going to approach them directly. Um, so this conversation, uh, th this check gives you that first uh, um, um, introduction and then we can take it from there. And by the time we get to the insurance point of view, we basically have only one question to ask because we know everything else. And the one question is, what would be your deductible? That's it. I hope that answers your question. There's yeah, a lot more to tell about it, of course. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and another question is how much, uh, what's the discount the customer can have on, uh, on this policy uh, for the, what's the difference, the scale between sure. the, the best in class and uh, the yeah. best in class and the, 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 the lower score? Right now, in a pricing model that has been approved by our Dutch insurer and its German parent, we go to about 35% of, of uh, a premium reduction if you have, let's say, a perfect safety score. So the important thing here is it's not just about the money because the money is an important aspect and you may save a couple of hundred euros annually which is nice, but it's really about something else. It's about avoiding a catastrophe. And, and people who understand that will consider the money as a nice extra and maybe something to reinvest in, a, in, in a, an additional sensor. Uh, could you elaborate a bit on the, on the quick scan POC with the Dutch insurer? So in, in terms of duration, uh, yeah. number of households, that kind of stuff? So um, we've just landed the project. Um, this insurer um, is, is, is 
interested in exploring how customers respond to this kind of concept. So for them, it's a make or buy decision. And since we already made it, it for us, it's a very interesting way to get input. Where, what we're going to do is a couple of activities initially approaching a thousand of their customers to, to do the scan and see what comes out of it, see how people respond to that. And then some additional marketing uh, to that. And we agreed to share the data so we can all learn from it. And it is something that we can set up very quickly because we have a no-code platform for our scan. We can just adopt it in a matter of hours and we can quickly add new insurance customers to it in other markets um, to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to scan, uh, to test the scan. I think we're way past our deadline, I'm sorry. No problem, super interesting. So uh, I don't know if there is any question from the public. No, so thank you very much. Thank you very much.